Hello, I'm Jill. Welcome to ASL Stew. So today I wanted to talk about interpreter burnout. I'm sure there's probably a few different signs for that, but I'm going to use this sign. So this means you're kind of done. So what exactly is interpreter burnout? Well, sometimes a person who's involved in the interpreting field will go along in their career and then after a while they just kind of feel like they don't want to interpret anymore. They're done. So I wanted to talk about some of the possible reasons for that and some possible solutions as well. And I have experienced interpreter burnout. Um, first, kind of let me explain what happened to me. So I graduated from my ITP, and then I decided to start working freelance plus doing some VRS. And as time went along, I kind of slowly transitioned to doing more VRS work, not technically full-time, but pretty much almost full-time VRS work. And then I would pick up freelance work, you know, at schools and things like that. So as time was going, I don't know, I just kind of became sick of interpreting. I, I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't really feel like going to work. And I don't know, I just felt like maybe I wanted to do another career. And I actually decided to go back to school. I was still interpreting at the same time. Obviously, I needed to keep getting money. So while I was interpreting, mostly VRS um, and some freelance, at the same time, I went back to school and got another bachelor's degree in anthropology. So once I graduated there, I thought, well, maybe I can continue with that. And then I started thinking, you know, why am I feeling so burnt out already with interpreting? I mean, I'd been interpreting maybe like eight years at that time, like not even that long. You know, I, I shouldn't feel that burnout already. So I really took a good look at myself and figured out I just don't really like VRS work. It had nothing to do with the company I worked for. I love my company and all of the people there. They're great. but at that time, just the field of VRS just didn't really fit with me. And it works for some people, but it just didn't really work for me. So I figured I need to transition to another type of interpreting. So luckily, I got hired at a university, which now I'm full-time staff at a university. And I love it. Like, I feel that passion for interpreting again. I don't feel like I need to transition to another career. So that's kind of my story. So I'm going to talk about some possible reasons for burnout. Some possible reasons are you're working too many hours. If you're working way too much, even if you love it, sometimes when you're working that much, you will get tired of it and you'll just feel worn out. Also, maybe you're working in a specific niche that you don't really like. Like I didn't really care for VRS that much. So I realized that if I did all of my work in that one area of VRS, it got really tiring for me. So maybe that's what it is for you. Also, you could be working in a really high-risk, stressful type of job. Maybe you work in mental health or, I don't know, high-risk medical or something like that. I mean, maybe you do other types of work, but it's very stressful. And that can make you really worn out and give you burned out as well. Also, if you're not ready for the type of work that you're taking and you accept jobs and they're way above your skill capabilities, your skill level, then you're going to get really frustrated, stressed out, and that can make you feel like you don't want to interpret anymore because it's too hard and you'll feel burnout. The last possible reason is maybe you're only thinking about the money aspect of it. If you're only focused on the money, then you might accept, you know, whatever job pays the most or you're working too many hours, which, again, if you're just picking jobs that you don't like for the money – then that means you're going to not like what you're doing, and eventually you'll feel like you don't like interpreting in general anymore. So that's a possible reason. So now I'm going to give some possible tips to kind of help slow the process or stop the burnout process. Now, understand a lot of these suggestions. I know sometimes you can't follow them. You are in a specific money situation, and you can't avoid these type of issues. I totally understand that. I've been there. I did that for a long time. I couldn't switch to another type of job. But if you can, here are some suggestions. 
you know, find a specific niche in interpreting that you really like. Maybe it's K through 12, or, you know, you love working with young kids, or middle school, high school, or maybe you really like medical, or legal, or college. Whatever it is, try and figure out which niche of interpreting you really like, and try to work more in that area. Don't overwork yourself. Don't work too many hours. It's not going to be helpful. Again, I understand, you know, if you're stuck and you have a lot of bills and things that you need to pay, you have to work a lot of hours. I get that. But if it's possible, try to lessen your workload. You know, self-care is important too. If you're working in a high risk or a very stressful job, try to balance it out. You can work some high risk, but also work some more low risk type of jobs. Try and keep that balance so you won't feel too overwhelmed all the time. And the last thing is, if possible, try to get support from your job. It's so important to have support. You know, maybe that means at your job you have a few or a lot of interpreters and you can set up a small group. And then you can talk about difficult situations, ethical concerns, and whatnot. Um, Also, that could mean working with a mentor. Maybe find somebody, maybe at your job or outside in the community, your interpreter network, and then sit down with them and talk with them. It's so important to have somebody or a group of people that you can talk with about your job and kind of just let go a little bit. So that is some possible tips to help with interpreter burnout. I'm curious, have you guys had that happen to you? Have you ever felt like you don't want to interpret anymore? And if you have, what is a solution for you? You know, what other possible tips could you have? Leave a comment down below. That'd be great if we could help each other out so we can all continue in this wonderful profession. So if you enjoyed this video, please click like and also subscribe. Also, if you want to provide some more support, you can check out our Patreon page, give support there. We have a link for donating on YouTube, as well as some coffee money down below. Any support we really appreciate. Thanks, and see you in the next video. Bye!